I am ready for King Leonard tonight. So I hope you guys are set. I hope you've been having fun today, getting out in the sunshine. That is the cool thing is I've been talking to some of my family up in Tennessee and they said like yesterday or day before, it was like 48 degrees and raining and they had been stuck in the house for a couple of days. So we can be thanking God, thank you, Lord, that we are down in Florida where there is sunshine and alligators. Hey, Pastor Andy, can I pray before we get started? Of course. Let's do it and we'll get rolling. All right, let's bow our heads, close our eyes. Father, we are thankful for the, the many good things you've given to us. For whatever reason, you've allowed us to have sunshine and beautiful weather while we're stuck at home. And Lord, I pray that you'd continue to give us ideas to keep us busy. And Lord, in this busy time of doing nothing, may we not forget you. As, we, as the kids walk out tomorrow and look at trees and grass and the world around them, may they remember there is a creator who made each of them and loves them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So we are ready, Pastor Andy, for page one. You guys see it? Hey, I do see it. On a screen share with uh, over on the side. That good? Can everybody see it? Everybody should see it, right? Testing, testing, one, two. Can everybody? Yep. I, I can hear you. I didn't know who you were asking. Well, I, I can see can the see picture. It. We can see it. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Jack. Okay, great. All right, here we go. There was once a lion king who ruled over all the beasts of the jungle. His name was Leonard, and he lived in a majestic castle high atop a mountain in the center of a jungle. He seldom came down from his beautiful palace, but kept watch over his subjects by gazing through his royal telescope. Pastor Andy, we might be on the wrong. There we go. That was page one. All right, let's go to page two. There we go. One fine summer day as King Leonard sat upon his throne. Oh, we might need to mute. Pastor Andy or somebody. We want to mute all. There we go. All right. One fine summer morning day, as King Leonard sat upon his throne, he had an idea. Hi. Hold on. Did we lose Sabrina? Uh, Pastor Andy. There she is. And Pastor Andy. Hi. Oh, Pastor Andy, do you know how to make that mute and the stick? I think that's you who does that. I muted? Oh. No, no, no to mute everybody else and where it stays muted. Yeah, let me fix that. Hold on guys, temporary break. Should I tell you another snake story? Cause I got lunches. Yes. <laughs> so it's muted. We got it fixed, Pastor Patrick, we're ready. All right, so. All right, you got yours. Here we go. One fine summer day, as King Leonard sat upon his throne, he had an idea. Horatio! The king bellowed, nearly losing his crown. A few moments later, a tall, thin bird scurried up to the throne. You called, sire? The bird asked. Yes, Horatio. King Leonard began. I've had a wonderful idea. I would like to give my subjects extra special celebration. There shall be fine food, games, balloons, cakes, music, noisemakers, puzzles, and ice cream. Yes, prepare gallons and gallons of ice cream. But sire, Horatio said, where will you hold this celebration? I will invite all of the animals here to my palace. The king smiled. Here, sire? But the they bird. Have, but they have never, ever. 
I know. The king nodded. They have never been here before. Well, it's high time that they came. We'll hold the party tomorrow. Begin the preparations immediately. So a royal decree was issued and the king's fleet-footed messengers ran to and fro, passing out invitations to all the jungle animals. One messenger went to Henry Hyena's home. What do you want? Henry asked when did he answered the door. Mr. Hyena, the messenger explained. King Leonard has requested your presence at a royal celebration, which will... King? He, Henry chuckled. King Schming, you don't expect me to believe that nonsense, do you? King Leonard's a joke. He's not real. Nobody's ever seen him. Then I take it you won't be attending his party. The messenger asked. You don't give up, do you? Henry laughed. <laughs> I really like to. He joked. But I just bought the Sahara Desert, and I thought I'd go take a look at it. Get it? I bought the Sahara Desert. <laughs> and before the royal messenger could say another word, Henry slammed the door in his face. At the house of Zelda the zebra, another messenger was knocking at the door. His arrival was announced by the barking of Miss Zebra's two energetic dogs. Who is it? She asked without opening the door. A royal messenger has come to invite you to King Leonard's celebration. The messenger said. There will be music, plenty of food, and you telling me that the mean old lion's having a party? Zelda exclaimed. I suppose I'm to be the main course. Oh, no! The messenger tried to explain. Certainly not. Listen, Zelda said sternly. I just bought a pair of fierce watchdogs, and I'll be too busy teaching them to attack intruders to go to any party. Then good day to you, ma'am, the messenger said, marking Miss Zebra's name off of her list. Another messenger approached the house of Marvin Monkey and rang the doorbell. After a brief pause, the door opened and out swung Marvin. Good morning, Mr. Monkey, the messenger said brightly. I have come to ask if you would like to attend King Leonard's celebration. <laughs> Marvin shook his head. You and the missus just got hitched? Well, congratulations, the messenger said. So we ain't coming, the monkey said, and he turned to scamper back up the vine. I'm sure the king will be disappointed, the royal messenger called after him. But Marvin had already swung into the house and slammed the door behind him. Meanwhile, back at the palace, King Leonard was pleased to see that the preparations in the grand ballroom were nearly complete. Good afternoon, sire, Horatio said with a salute. The royal dessert makers are ready to start with ice cream at your word. King Leonard turned to the cluster of cooks waiting near the ice cream making equipment. Gentlemen, the king said, raising his paws into the air. Let the ice cream begin! This sent the cooks into a frenzy of measuring, pouring, and stirring. You have done a fine job, Horatio, the king said, patting the thin bird on his back. A fine job indeed. Just then, one of the royal messengers came in and whispered something to Horatio. I'm afraid I have some bad news, sire, the thin bird said with a frown. What is it? the king asked. Are any of my subjects unable to attend the celebration? Horatio nodded and began reading from a list the messenger had handed to him. Henry Hyena, Zelda the Zebra, Marvin the Monkey, he read. How terrible, the king said. Wally Water Buffalo, Sam the Snake and his sister Susie, Hubert Hippopotamus. Elizabeth the elephant. Oh my. <laughs> the king moaned, putting a paw over his face. Patricia Panther, Charles the cheetah, Oliver the orangutan, 
Gregory Gorilla. And none of them will be attending? King Leonard asked, his face filled with disappointment. Then tell me, Horatio, who can come? No one, sire. The thin bird said quietly. No one will be coming to your celebration. Horatio had never seen King Leonard look so sad. I am very sorry, sire. The bird said, trying to comfort the king. Would you like me to have the decorations taken down and the food put into the royal refrigerators? The king nodded glumly. And what shall I do about the ice cream, sire? He asked. It certainly will not save. The king said with a sigh. It must be disposed of. See to it. Horatio was about to carry out the order when King Leonard had another idea. Wait, Horatio! The king roared. Allow the cooks to continue with the royal ice cream. But sire, who will eat it? Horatio asked. King Leonard stroked his mane and thought out loud. My own subjects will not attend, eh? Then we shall carry on without them. Summon my messengers once again. Horatio saluted and bowed. Royal messengers. He squawked. The king's fleet-footed messengers were sent out again to deliver invitations for the royal celebration. But this time, by the king's order, they journeyed beyond the jungle to the great towns of the forest. And even as far as the cities by the sea, as they went, they handed out invitations for King Leonard's party to everyone they met. Many of these animals were dirty. Some had only rags for clothes, yet they skipped about with joy when they heard the news, and they gladly agreed to attend the celebration. Then they happily followed the messengers to the king's palace, where they were given baths and beautiful clothes to wear. Sire, Horatio addressed the king. The messengers have carried out your request. King Leonard raised his furry eyebrows. And have they returned with the party goers? Horatio nodded proudly. The king clapped his claws, paws together. But sire, the bird said, there are still a few empty seats at the banquet table, and the ice cream is... Almost ready. Call all the royal messengers again, the king said. Send them to the country and tell them to be quick. Horatio disappeared in a flurry of feathers and sent the messengers one last time. They went to the country just as the king had commanded, inviting all of the animals that they could find. When every seat at the banquet table had been filled, King Leonard entered the royal ballroom. He was delighted with what he saw. There, in the midst of the festive decorations, was a host of smiling faces eagerly awaiting the start of the celebration. Upon seeing the king, the guests gasped with surprise and wonder. Then they stood and they bowed before him. Greetings, my new friends, King Leonard called out in a regal voice. Greetings, your highness. They responded politely. Stepping to his seat, King Leonard lifted his punch-filled goblet high into the air. I welcome you all to my palace. Let the celebration begin. To the animal surprise, balloons suddenly dropped from the high ceiling and bright fireworks exploded. It was all quite delightful. And the crowd joined in, shouting and blowing noisemakers and t- t- Tutors <laughs> above, <laughs> above the roar of the crowd, King Leonard addressed the royal band. Let there be music! The music and games began, and the ballroom was filled with happy sounds. <laughs> then Horatio spoke a word in the king's ear. The lion smiled and jumped up from his seat. My dear guests, he said with a cub like grin. The royal ice cream is now ready to be served. And at this, the crowd cheered. (laughs) So it was that King Leonard's celebration began. 
And what a celebration it was. The king talked with his new friends. He walked with them. He shared in their games. He even let them look through his royal telescope. The animals had a splendid time as well. In fact, they so enjoyed the company of the king that they did not want to return to their own homes. In the end, King Leonard invited them all to stay and live with him in his palace. So the party was extended day after day. The king and his new friends played, they sang and they ate ice cream. And day after day, King Leonard's celebration continued. And you may be saying, Pastor Patrick, I've heard something about this, but I'm, it sounds familiar, but what is it? Is this from the Bible? Well, maybe not the animal part, but tonight, remember Luke. Make your L's on your foreheads, Luke. Now, I want you to go Luke, and then I want you to make a circle, like a gold ring, a 14 carat gold ring, Luke 14, gold ring, Luke 14, 14 karat gold. So tonight, when you're going to bed, and let me tell all the moms and dads who are watching, if you're not taking this time to tuck your kids in, this is an incredible time. Don't, if you haven't been doing it, start. If you have been doing it, continue. Tuck them in, pray with them, talk to them while you're laying there in the dark. But tonight, as you're going to bed, read to them. Luke chapter 14, but don't forget, turn out the light and just lay there and talk to him for a while. You'll be surprised at what you might find out. All right, Pastor Andy, should we let everybody do some talking again? Yeah, that sounds great. Let me ask you. Put your hand if you do want me to tell you another snake story. Story? Buddy? All right, I see a lot of hands. Okay, Pastor Andy. Tonight, turn off the, we'll turn, we'll mute them all and I'll tell one. Hi, Andy. Hi. Hi. Can you keep them all mute? There we go. So here, I'll tell you guys. Again, remember, every one of Pastor Patrick's stories are true. I have lived the most incredible, God just knew, I, I don't know why he let me live some of the crazy things I've done. But, so, one day we were driving home from church, and in the middle of the street, I'm telling you guys, y'all can only see like here, but imagine my arm this long. It was a green snake in the middle of the road, and he was almost three feet long. He was the biggest green snake I have ever seen, and he was crossing the middle of the road. I was afraid he's going to get hit, and it's a green snake. We can play with him. We can take him to church tonight. <laughs> this will be great. So I was driving what's called a stick shift car. It's a little Saturn for moms and dads, and so you have to have one hand on the steering wheel, and you put the other hand on a gear shift that you have to keep moving to make the car move. So I blocked both lanes because there was no cars coming the other way at that moment. So I blocked both lanes. I got out of the car and I grabbed the snake. I was pretty sure that he wasn't poisonous, but I wasn't positive. So I don't do this. I grabbed him more by the tail than I did. I didn't have the head at all. And then there were cars piling up behind us in both directions. So my wife was in the front seat and my two kids were in the back seat. So I jumped in the car holding only his tail and his head's going everywhere. And I told my wife, Miss Casey, I said, here, hold him, hold him so I can put it in gear. And she was like, I'm not holding him. And so then I stuck him in the back seat. Remember, his head is going everywhere like this. And my kids were like, ah! I'm not holding him. And it was terrible. My wife wouldn't hold him. I just asked them to do a little thing. They wouldn't hold that snake just because his head was going everywhere like that. So 
I had to hold him and drive with one hand. And then Miss Casey was sticking it in gear as we were driving. And we did find out when we got home, he didn't bite. He was a nice friendly snake that I took to church that night with me. It was great. Played with it. No, no, no. Pastor Patrick, I'm going to stop you right there. Uh, just for a disclaimer, never bring a snake to church. Don't bring any live animals to church. I just feel like we need to say that when church does come back. No live animals, please. Uh, one time I had a kid bring a scorpion to church, and he let it loose on the air hockey table, and I had to catch a live scorpion that was venomous. So please, Pastor Patrick, while your stories are good, they often should come with a disclaimer. It is true. Absolutely. So don't bring any snakes. We did have a kid once. Never mind. I will we'll wait on that one for another time. Anyhow, I hope you guys had fun tonight. Don't forget Kahoot at 11 o'clock tomorrow. And then Thursday night or Wednesday night, tomorrow. Um, Pastor Andy. So tomorrow, Pastor, we have our, um, we have our next hashtag challenge tomorrow. <gasps> Tomorrow's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Wednesday. We get to do another, another hashtag challenge. But <gasps> is this time you're not going to have to build something. You might have to do something different. Ooh. What will it be? How do they find out about this, Pastor Andy? Instagram Live tomorrow. And then after that, we'll be posting it on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. You'll be able to find the challenge and you'll know what we're going to do next. So they won't be able to log in and see what we say. They'll have to be on mom or dad's Instagram account Correct. where mom and dad might have to share it with them. Okay. So we don't actually do it right here. So somebody asked in the chat, what is the hashtag challenge? It's just a, um, an opportunity to, uh, where we give out a challenge and we ask everybody to do it and we just see all the different ways and everybody sends us pictures of what you did so we can see it in videos. Hey, so last week, the hashtag challenge was you build like a pillow fort in your house where you take sheets and blankets and different things and you put them up all around. Some of you guys built like whole condominium complexes, different rooms, different places, and you could go into those rooms. And I am so proud of you guys. So many of your moms and dads have sent me pictures of you reading your Bible in your... Pastor Patrick, I've seen more Bibles in forts than I have snacks. It's been awesome. That is awesome. So this is a great time. Remember guys, you can open up to Genesis. You can open up in the New Testament. Either way, you can start in the... As a matter of fact, we're reading the book of John with Pastor Ken. Open up your Bible tomorrow and have mom or dad read you John chapter 1. We'll be a couple days behind, but that'll work. And they can read you John chapter one. And then at night, but tonight, don't forget Luke 14. 